Uh, we look at this part called the nature of roots. If you look at the word nature, nature of roots, what are roots first? Roots are the x intercepts. Roots are nothing else but the x intercept. For example, if we've got a graph like this one, this is my cutters and plane, I have a graph, a straight line graph. This part is called the root, the x intercept. If I've got a parabola, these two are called the roots, the x intercepts. So when we talk of this section, the nature of roots, remember it's question one, it's about quadratic. Therefore, we look at the quadratic graph. So we talk of nature of roots. There are roots in all other graphs, but we only focus on the parabola in this case, the quadratic graph, which has got about two roots. So when we look at the nature of roots, we look at nature, nature. In Jani, nature, that's what the nature is. Roots in this particular case. And we said, nature in general, behavior type. Very same thing. We don't have to divorce mathematics from real life. So when we take off the nature of roots, but there's something that we use to determine the nature of roots. To determine the nature of roots, we use what we call the discriminant. Other, they use this symbol for the discriminant, delta. What is the discriminant? The discriminant, remember when we talked about the quadratic formula? It says x is equals to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, the discriminant is what is found under the square root sign. In this particular case, this becomes the discriminant. This is what is going to assist us to be able to determine the nature of roots, the discriminant. So, discriminant is equals to a b squared minus 4ac. This is what we call the discriminant. This becomes important when we deal with this topic, the nature of roots. This part here, remember we can't solve this if this is negative, because at this level we don't know the square root of a negative, of a negative number. That becomes crucial in this section. We usually use three sketches. It can behave. The roots of a parabola can only behave in three ways. Number one, it can behave this way. Uh, can behave this way. Number two, it can behave this way. Number three, it can behave this way. It can behave only in three ways. So when you think of this section, it's towards the end of your algebra. This is what must come into your brain. For this one, what are roots? Are the x-intercepts? Does this graph cut the x-axis? No, it doesn't. So in this particular case, there are no real roots. We refer to this part as no real roots. Ah, you will be able to tell if you are going to find roots or not. Because all the time, if your discriminant is negative, in other words, if this part here is negative, remember it is under the square root sign, you can't solve something that there is no square root of a negative number. So if this number here is negative, you are going to have this situation. You are not going to find the values of x. You are not going to find the solution there. There will be no real roots. So in other words, if the discriminant, if b squared minus 4ac is negative, you are going to find this situation. So this, this becomes a key. So if the statement says to you, there are no real roots, what must you know? You must know that the discriminant is negative. That's one part. Let's go back to the first two, first two. Let's start with the second one. If you have a situation like this, how many roots do we have here? Are your eyes working? These are the roots, how many? In this particular case, we've got two real. Are these roots the same? No, they are unequal unequal roots. This is what we have in this scenario. We've got two real and unequal roots. For example, suppose this was uh, minus 1. 
suppose this was 3 so the answer would be x is equal to 1 of the roots <laughs> the roots um, x is equal to minus 1 before that when you fact when you x plus 1 into x uh, minus 3 equal to 0 then you'll have x is equal to minus 1 or x is equal to 3 when we are factorizing and solving for x we're just looking for roots of a parabola so do you know that this is a root, this is another root. Are these roots the same? No. How many? There are two, they are unequal. This is the situation. But at times you will solve a problem, let's make this two. You'll solve a problem like this one. Then let's say x uh, minus two into x minus two is equal to zero. Let's go further. So x is equal to two or x is equal to two. This is the scenario where both roots are in the same place, where it becomes a turning point there. Now, what is this saying to me? X is equal to 2 or X is equal to 2. How many roots? There are two. One, two. How are these roots? They are the same. So in this scenario, we've got two real and equal roots. You can see the difference between the first and the second one. The first one, there are two real, two real, that is the difference. These ones are unequal, these ones are equal. That is why when you move on to other sections, when you look at uh, cubic functions in your calculus, when you have something like this, ah, there will be three roots, there will be one, and these two will be equal, it comes from this one. Two real and equal roots, so it's one, two, three. So there are three roots in total, but when you look at them, you think there are only two. But these are two equal roots there. It comes from the topic, the nature of roots. Now, what do we know? When we've got two really un un unequal roots, your discriminant, your b squared minus 4ac will be greater than zero. If this value here is greater than zero, you are going to get two real and unequal roots. But if my b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, I'm going to get uh, two real and equal roots. That is the key. If you want to master this section called the nature of roots, you must master this three diagram. It will make life easier for us. Now let us see how they set this section in the examination. Remember the keywords to see which diagram you're going to use are the keywords like, like non-real roots. Other books will use imaginary roots. It simply means the same thing. Two real and equal roots. Two real and unequal roots, it will be this diagram. So when you read, you look for these keywords. Equal, unequal, non-real, or imaginary roots. In November 2012, it was question 1.3. It says, the solution to quadratic equation are given by x is equal to that particular thing. The, the question says, for which value or values of p will the equation have number one two equal roots number two non-real roots look at the keywords what are the keywords there equal roots equal roots which data is it one two or three ah that's the keyword equal roots now whenever we've got two real and equal roots what do we know about our discriminant our discriminant must be equal to zero that becomes important. Remember in your quadratic formula, it says x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Look at this value here. What do we call this? We call that the discriminant or delta. Where does it reside? The discriminant is hiding under the square root sign. So what is written here in that form is called the discriminant. Now, let's look at our question. This is what we have. This is what we have. Ah, it is exactly the same as this. So you can tell in that pro problem there, what is the discriminant? Ah, it is, is it, it is hidden under the square root sign. So in this particular case, this value here, which is written, hidden under the square root sign, becomes my discriminant. Now watch here. Then you go to, 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 to <laughs> the answer is always in the question. Two equal roots. 
What do you know about the discriminant? If we've got two equal roots, your b squared minus 4ac, or your discriminant must be equal to zero. The question wants us to find the value of values of p. Why can't they say value? Why do they include both value or values? Because when we say value, you'll definitely know that it's equal sign. But when we say values, it will be inequality sign. So we don't want to show you exactly where the solution is. That's why we include value or values. If the question only said value, we know that we're going to go straight here. If it says values only, we're going to go there. But we need to confuse you and say value or values so that you don't know which part it is, whether it's an equality sign or equal sign. But this is telling us exactly two equal roots two equal roots, so it's this diagram, there are two real and equal roots. So your discriminant must be equal to zero. And what is our discriminant in this case? It is 2p plus 5. How should it be? Our 2p plus 5 must be equal to zero. Discriminant must be equal to zero for two real and equal roots. What is it that we're looking for? We're looking for p. Can you solve p? Yeah. Yes, we can solve p. Let's solve for p. So it will be 2p is of course, take that one, that's why it's minus 5. Therefore, P, you divide by 2 on both sides, it should be minus 5 over 2. That's how easy this section is, the nature of roots. All that you need to think of is just these three diagrams. And you, and you follow on, on the question, you check your, your, your keywords. In this particular case, the keyword was two equal roots. Let's look at the, the next question. For which values, value of values of P will the equation have no real roots. Can you see the, the, the keyword there? No real roots. Which diagram is that? Is it the first one, the second one, or the third one? Where we don't have roots. We do have roots here. There are two equal roots. These are two unequal roots. Ah, this is the one when we have no real roots. What do we know about its discriminant? Its discriminant is negative. The discriminant is negative. It shall have a discriminant in touching a particle square root sign. Because of this keyword, no real roots, no real roots, no real roots. So the discriminant, how is the discriminant there? It is negative. Where does it hide? Under the square root sign. You make the discriminant negative. So 2p plus 5, which is our discriminant in this case, it must be negative. Then we solve for p. We're looking for value of values of p. Same thing, same thing as in this one. So 2p is less than minus 5, therefore p will be less than minus 5 over 2. This is how we go about responding to this question. It's only about these three diagrams, Ubun Jalubama roots. Roots can only behave in three ways. In this way, we've got two real and unequal roots, uh, where you have two real and equal roots and no real roots. And another important factor, another question might not say equal or unequal, right? The question might say uh, the roots are real. They just say real. Are these roots real? No. Are these roots real? Yes, they are. Are these roots real? Yes, they are. When they say real, you don't know whether it's this diagram or this diagram. When they say real only. So what do we do when we're dealing with real only? We say your b squared, your b squared minus 4ac. Do we have real here? Yes, we do have real. And how is the determinant? It is greater than zero. Greater than zero. Do we have real here? Yes. And how is the determinant? It is equal to zero. So when it is only real, when it is only real, and it does not tell you whether those real roots are unequal or equal, you only use this one. We're going to think it's either it is positive or it is equal to zero. So the sign that you will be using when, if, when it is only real, it will be greater or equal to, because it can be there or here when it is only real. But once we are specific, we say real and equal, we know that it is greater than. Once we are specific, we say the roots are equal, it is only this one, p squared minus 4ac is equal to zero. I want us to look at the last problem that I want us to look at. It was taken from uh, March 2014, it was 1.2. Something is uh, slightly different. Uh, what does it say? Given that f of x is equal to x squared minus 5x plus c, we don't have this value of c, right? Uh, determine the value of c. It did not say value of values, specific the value of c in this particular case. We want the value of c. If it is given that 
the solutions of f of x equal to 0 are given by that. Okay? Right. This is what we are given. We are given 5 plus or minus square root of 41 all over 2. Remember, this is the same as x is equal to plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this one, this 41, is our discriminant. It is hidden under the square root sign. And we use the discriminant to determine the nature of roots. So that is going to assist us. Now watch here. We want the value of c, right? And we know that uh, given that f of x is equal to that, determine the value of c, if it is given that the solution of f of x equal to 0 are given by that. In that particular case, what is a? a is 1. What is b? b is minus 5. And what is c? We don't know what is c. So we know that f of x is equal to 1x squared minus 5x plus c. Determine the value of c if it is given that the uh, solutions of f of x equal to 0 are there. We're just looking for the value of c. We know that in this particular case, our a is equal to 1, our b is equal to minus 5, and our c is equal to c. We don't know the value of c. That's what we're looking for. All right. Guys, we know that our b squared minus 4ac, our discriminant, were given in that it is hidden there. What is our discriminant in this case? It is 41. Remember what we are looking for. We are looking for c. Determine the value, not values, value of this of, of that number. Let's work it out. Do we know what is b? <laughs> yes, we are given from that equation. We are given the value of b. What is b in this case? It is 5. So we've got minus 5 squared minus 4. Do we know the value of a? Yes, we are given there the value of a. It is 1. Do we know the value of c? No, we are looking for c. But all of this must give us 41. It becomes basic algebra. We know what is this. It is 25. 25 taken that side, it will be uh, negative. Let, let's write it down. This is minus 4c is equal to what is 41 minus 25. Let's quickly work on it. We've got 41 minus 25. What does it give us? It gives us 16. Equals to 16. Right. What is it that we're looking for, Tina? We're just looking for c. So we divide by negative 4 on both sides. Negative 4. Divide there once. So c, therefore our c is equal to minus 4 into 16, 4, 8, 12, 16, so it's minus 4. This is the value of c. So this is how you go about solving this problem. No matter what they're twisting in these questions, they're just asking about the discriminant, and it can only behave, the roots can only behave in these three different ways. Thank you so much.